investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this very last trading day of January 2024. The Dow is up 12 at 38.478. Look at this Boeing out of the blue. Boeing comes out with earnings. It's up $7 at 207.59. From the chart pattern that I'm looking at, this looks more like a, uh, a bounce that's going to have to be retested at the 200 level, 119.8 level uh, over the next week or so. But we'll see. This is important because Boeing has done so many, so many things wrong. Uh, all, all I can say is that um, it's very hard to have the kind of faith we used to have, what was it, 10 years or so in Boeing, uh, you know, they've had some some situations that are almost self-inflicted, and that is really uh, troublesome. All right, so let's get back. So we've got the uh, Boeing. What was the other one that I was thinking of? Uh, yeah, Honeywell. Honeywell is in the Dow, and Honeywell was up quite sharply. In fact, it spiked up to 207.71. Now it's down to 204.19, down to $1.71. Came out with earnings. It looked like it was good. Hey, look at this. You see this tiny doji candle right here on the 2nd of January at 210.61, uh, the recovery high. Uh, well, you know what happened? That day also saw a close of 209.00. And then what did it do? It plummeted down to the 195 level and now it's had a big spike up. Talk about round numbers. You know, I've been talking about round numbers this is a week, exactly, right? Since last week, Wednesday, I was saying, hey, there's so many round numbers. Look at this. Um, NVIDIA, a NVDA. I was watching this all day yesterday, and I thought, am I right? Am I reading this correctly? Well, it had a 634.93 all-time high yesterday. Well, you know how I talk about round numbers that for, oh, not just uh, years, decades and decades, uh, going, even going into the 1987 crash, I was already very aware of round numbers, and that gave me the signal on the 19th that we had made, made a, a major low and that within, uh, what did I, think? I remember saying, within 16 months, we should be at all-time highs because of those round numbers. Well, I don't know if it's going to work that way at this particular point, but we've had, I, I must have counted between last week and this week, just on stocks that are important stocks, maybe 30, 40 round numbers, either at the high or the, or the day before, the day after, or at the close, within that actual high, within a day or two or the day of. So what do we get? We get NVIDIA, 634.93, and it has an opening 629.00. Open goes to an all time high and is now at 617. So, make it this is the way I used to always use the round numbers. If it takes out this, that should be resistance. If it takes it out, it allows for it's still important, but it's lost the importance because the further away you go, the greater that 629 is going to be um, a very serious repellent line. So, if it close at, at this point. It can pop above it, but if it closes above it, be prepared that it can go a little higher. But it's a, a warning to say that it's reached like a ball when you throw it up. It reaches a 0% change as it's about to inflect from the upside to the downside. It stops for a millisecond stationary. It has to, otherwise it couldn't turn around. And that's really what I look at for round numbers. All right. Enough for that. Let's just go on. Let's just see what Advanced Micro Devices is doing. So Advanced Micro Devices uh, made, a, um, not, made an all-time high. I have the still in a leg B in the weekly charts. So I'm not getting too excited about any pullbacks yet at the moment. And that could change. But right now, we've got an all-time high of 184.92. I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched for round numbers. I didn't find any. Um, and right now, what we're, we're 
trading at uh, in advanced micro devices is uh, it's trading at 167.13 down five, just about five. So it's not a big deal. Go from the 184s to the 180, uh, 167 area. Um, well, I, I, it is considering how quickly it came up. This is that inverted V-shaped pattern. So we got to watch it close. All right, let's get to our story. So we've got the QQQ. I did the S and P. The QQQ had a 429.25 peak D high with a Doji candle. All these tiny Doji candles at all-time highs. I always say to myself, "Wow." I mean, that's the slowing of the upside momentum, but that just means the slowing of the upside momentum. Says you can't turn around and say, oh, my God, 4.29, I see this going to 3.29. No, you have to go one step at a time. The one step at a time says we've got the dreaded H, which failed yesterday because now it's making a lower low. It's sitting on the two, uh, the 14 period exponential moving average. This is the QQQ, Investco QQQ Trust Series, QQQ Trust Series. This is the NDX 100 trading vehicle. I have it as a peak C. I could give this a G slash C, but I'm calling it a C in the weekly chart for now. So that says intermediate term still very strong. And I'm calling it a B in the monthly chart. That says um, longer term, it's still in a buy mode. All right, so this is just a very important uh, momentary timeout. That's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, I wanted to just go to the IWM because some people are saying small caps are going to become... Um, more popular <clears throat> I don't know so this is the 2000 the 3000 is that uh, wait the IWB is the 1000 which has done fantastically IWB made an all uh, made an all-time high at a peak whoa oh, ho ho this is a peak C right here look peak B peak C and a D we made a D just like the QQQ just made a D um, and pull back the IWB. That's the iShares Russell 1000 ETF. Gosh, what's the 3000? Somebody if you're in the den, if you can give me a yell, tell me what the 3000 is. I'd appreciate it. Actually, you know what I'll do right now. I'll say, uh, if I can just go right here. Actually, now let me finish this. I'll write it down. Uh, uh, IWM 3000, not 3, IWM, but it's that. Okay. So uh, with that said, Let's look at the um, TLT. TLT was soaring earlier on because the, the bond yields have started to come down, and that's usually a very good thing. But we'll see if that correlation works here because uh, all the correlations have been topsy-turvy lately. Uh, so this is 96.50, up 78 cents on the 200-period moving average after that 100.57 peak uh, G at on the 28th of January, and then it comes down. I think the IWB went to a D. Let's see what this meant. Trough A, trough B, yep, trough C, and trough D. So this went to a trough D, and on the upside, we've got a gray A because the stochastic uh, and MACD are still very weak. So I'm only calling it a gray A. I'm not going to change the color right now. And the TBT, which is the inversion, has gone to a peak D, and we're pulling back with a 32.02 down 58 cents. Mm, this is going to be something to watch. So where are we? We've started in for my subscribers to my video. We started implementing some short positions. We tried to get one today. I know there's something. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hello, so we're back. Yeah, so the Russell uh, 3000 is, um, let's see. Russell 3000 is right at dollar RUA. I get it from Trade Station. So I haven't got the IWM equivalent. Uh, I've got the actual index. The actual index has made a peak E in the daily, a leg B in the weekly, tiny energy candle, but we've still got a couple of days to go, and a leg C in the monthly, and that leg C, oh, 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 wait a minute. Uh, that was uh, 2817.11, and that was the 27, yep, that was the high back in January of 22, and uh, 28, what did I say, 17.11? And the most recent high was at 28.07.07. So actually, that's not a D. That just picks up. Remember, the whole the rule here in the Chapman Wave methodology is from the low bar, you count each successively higher peak and becomes a gray peak if you pull back and you start another, another peak under it. But if it takes out that, that higher left side, peak, that's the next letter. That becomes a C. So if this made a C underneath, you'd have an overlapping wave, which guarantees you that you're going to a D. 90-something uh, percent that you will go to a D. Well, we've just gone to the D now. This is not a C because that C gets picked up because the pullback didn't take out the initial starting point down in the 1200s. And here we are we're in leg D right now. So that's fascinating. Why? Because remember the uh, S&P monthly chart, SPX.X, there we go, S&P, made a peak B, but all the other peaks underneath it was peak A, great peak A, great peak B. Then I made it blue because I said, uh-oh, stochastic's over 80%. I have to call this a buy mode. We should be going to a D, and that D gets picked up the moment it crosses that peak B because we're already at a higher level. That's Chapman Wave methodology. And that's kind of important. And most, even more significant is 
that within the context of the IWB, the IW, whatever this is in IW language, the S&P 500 index, so this is the RUT. Oh, now do I remember it? R-U-A, I believe it was. Or was it dot X? Yes, no, it wasn't. Dollar R U A. There it is. Yeah, and that that is uh, where you take that peak C, and that's a continuation pattern to D. All right. So that's very different. All time highs is just made. So it's only the I W M that's been relentlessly reluctant to move higher. So now I've got a bunch of questions coming. In. Have I covered everything I wanted to? Yes. Um, so a couple of things that we needed to look at, and that is, let's just go back to gold. Now, of course, with the Fed talk this afternoon, et cetera, uh, that is important. But what was really important to me is that the weekly chart, and that's what I've been saying about gold all the time, is that it's not acting badly. It's not acting great. It's just acting OK. It's gone sideways. Now, what's really important is we've seen so many of these big spikes up, and by the end of the day, they give, give it back. This, to me, is a little different because the nine period moving average is within a millimeter of crossing green, which will be the first time it's done it since the big move down back in the beginning of uh, January. So, and it hit the 200 period moving average almost twice, and now it's used that as a springboard. So, I'm not ruling it out, and I'm not ruling it out because the dollar has made its peak D. It's tested it a number of times. In fact, what I meant to change was uh, that's 103. Point 103.82 on the 23rd and 103.82 yeah double top peak D and it's pulling back but it's still I mean it's still green nine period moving average right so that's why and if you're looking at the dollar it almost went to a 60 uh, uh, no a 50% retracement uh, on that move up from the uh, the 100 area so at this particular point, the day is young. So the question is, I've got a couple of emails coming in right now and texts and questions. Let me just change this if you don't mind. I just want to see. I'm updating here with my, I think I finally got all my emails working correctly. Uh, let me see right here. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, there we are. Okay. Uh, yes, I'll get to that in a moment. So uh, RSP, or I'll do it right now. The RSP, that is the, here we go, RSP, RSP. That's the S&P 500 equal weight ETF. Remember, this is where we're talking about the chance of an overlapping wave. It made a peak C at 164.49. Let's just get this to show. There it is. Um, we've got an overlapping wave potential if all of February... Well, it's going to be tough. Look what happened. Uh, yesterday, we went to 158.84. I forgot to type this in. 158.60. We missed it by a fraction. So 158.60, 158.60. This is the equal weight. Now, it's only important. Kind of, I, I look at this more as informational uh, meaning that the equal weights, is, there's a difference, but you know, index are, in, are indexes. I just treat them for what they are as chart patterns. And this one says a move above 164.49 stars leg D, even if it continues in this gray leg C, all of February. I think that February is going to be the month that tells us whether or not the small caps are going to do something. So let's just go back. The reason I was looking at this was a question came in. So let's look at this in terms of the GDX. The GDX, something completely different. Market vectors, gold miners, ETF is up nicely. It's up 1.56%, up 44 cents at 28.59. But it's not a chart that looks like gold. Now, I prefer if the gold miners, because that's telling us it's actionable. It tells us that the gold product itself is in demand as a utensil, as a um, as an economic barometer of how gold is not as a geopolitical situation, but how it's functioning in the actual, in the active world, in the functional world. So I'm just saying to you that, yeah, the GDX, let's put it this way. 
at this particular point, what I've been saying is that I think the dollar is now going to start to struggle a little bit. I think that if you look at the EUR, USD, and I always like to put this into the pie, is testing and testing and testing. This is the euro, the 200 period exponential moving average can't get off the ground like a magnet. The USD, JPY, this is the Japanese yen uh, dollar currency pair. As it's just like the dollar made a little double top at peak D is pulling back, but the line is still very strong. So I think it's a little early to say, okay, and let's just go to, uh, let's go to Newmont Mining, Newmont Mining. Yeah, it's a nice little move up to up 2%, but it's up 75 cents and 35.26 after a really ugly H pattern. But it has successfully so far tested the, the low. Uh, let's go to uh, GLD, G-O-L-D. That's gold. That is um, a barrack that used to be ABX. Also, same thing. It also looks like the GDX. So the question is, do I buy? Actually, a few people say, do we finally get into gold? And I've had subscribers out of the GDX for quite some time. And I'm going to say, this is where I would nibble at the GDX. I don't know if I'd go aggressively yet. I would just nibble and I'd give it a, a fairly wide stop, the GDX trading at 28.65. Just for now, I'd give it just for the moment about a dollar point and ten cents currencies commodities and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe which is why it's a great time to try out teddy kegstat's tiger forex report teddy kegstat breaks down the forex markets every monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures forex stocks and options teddy releases his weekly tiger forex report every monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs including the dollar index the euro dollar pound dollar dollar swiss dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So I just wanted to show you this. The silver is up 
17 cents at 23.40. This is not, this is okay. It's not a great chart. Yep, it's staying around in the nine period moving average will probably cross positive. The bank needs goods, the cash is running to 65%. Uh, but it's a 200 period moving average of 23.81. That's really the target. If it starts to trade above that, that's really important. But this is a good sign because it means for green candles, one, two, three, red candle, four, five, six, seven. So out of Seven sessions, there's just been one red candle and it's a peak A and then a leg B. Today's a leg B. So that says this action, action here, it isn't very strong right now, but it just says <laughs> making lower lows and lower highs. It's just starting at an attempt at a turnaround. Weekly doesn't look great, but it's better than it was. So I'm just saying to GDX, yeah, at this particular point, I'd prefer to have got it just a little bit lower to give me wiggle room. But at this point, I'd make it just a small position at 28.64, a very small position. It's like a like a, a testing position, right? Because what happens very often is when the market pulls back sharply, if it's going to, has the hit, Dow's up 38, SP's down 38. Huh, interesting. Um, uh, this is that rotational selectivity that we talk about. Uh, so in the, within that context, very often gold actually does pull back. So it has a, quite a bit to do with yields, and the yields right now are saying that um, yields are attempting to to slide a little bit. So follow that closely. So I wanted to show you something interesting. Look, here's Microsoft. This is a Chapman Wave. So far, it's a Chapman Wave Roman candle. The long wick, big red body, but the days, we're an hour into the session. I can't really talk about it as if it's done, but I'm just saying I'm watching this very closely. I'm anticipating that N leg D goes to a peak D, that Microsoft is going to pull back. It is a Dow stock. So that, that is having a little bit of debilitation in terms of where the Dow would be with Boeing up like this. Up now is up 660. But that's just one stock. All right. In the meantime, back at the ranch, I wanted to look at, have I ever for MDY, which is the real mid caps. MDY went to an alternate count. Ho, ho, ho. That's G slash C. How many G slash Cs eventually go to a D? It's just unbelievable. When I said to you about a year and a half ago and then a year ago and then six months ago, I said, consider that G slash C, put it in because it tells you that there could be a little cup formation and then it'll go to a D and that's where you got to be careful. And then lo and behold, uh, mid caps, S&P mid cap fund went to that D with a tiny doji candle, pulled back quite sharply to the uh, under 490. So it goes from the 513 uh, or so area, sharply down, goes to peak A, and now it's stalling at this peak A. But it's not pulling back sharply, it's just stalling. And we're going to be watching. It's the peak C in the weekly chart. So the MDY hasn't done the same as uh, the IWB. And thank you, Jeff, and the, and the YouTube, Tiger YouTube. Yeah, that the Russell 1000 is the best 1000 of the 3000. So that's the IW. What did I just do? That's the R, uh, R U A dollar R U A dot X. That I that's how I get the uh, uh, that's equivalent to the I to the Russell 3000. So this is the mid caps. And you can see you've gone to a peak C all of January. I don't think today it's going to go to a a continuation of legacy that'll become a peak C. That says you can get a sharp move at some point to the 533 level and you're at 506. All right. But in the meantime, it's holding well. It isn't leading. All right. Now, what did I want to do? I did that, did that, did that. Then there was a question that came in. Where was it? Where was that other question? Oh, right here. Let me just go back. So in the Tiger Den, we've got, let me go, go back so I can get them in order. Uh, that wasn't for me. Okay, here we go. Question came in that said, could I look at surfs up? IMV is the three. Uh, yeah, uh, so can you get I, IMV? I don't get it that way at this point. I'll try to figure out what it is. IWV you get. I wonder if it's IMV. IMV. Nothing. Okay. Next question was, well, I've just, I dealt with it. I, I gave it you. Belza, did you say you remember 1987 mark is 37 years ago? Uh, what were you 14? Um, not exactly. Um, I'm I'm starting to catch up to Larry. I'm you know that's the way it is. But as long as I can still play tennis, 
Age is just not an issue. Could I look at Amazon? AMZN. Uh, AMZN making a peak E today. Uh, it made a top yesterday. This is Amazon comes out with earnings Thursday. Ooh, ooh, going to be an interesting week. I said, this is an interesting week, and I'm going to give you my scenario right now before I forget. Oh, and the other scenario is I was, uh, a number of people have asked me about my coda. What, what does it really mean? Or some people have said, I've listened to you for years and years and years, and you, whenever you talk about coda, I listen intently. And I'm, not, I'm only going to tell you the ingredients. They haven't come together yet. One is the uh, world's, tall, uh, world's tallest building, but now I've, I've said I think the next move will be the United States' tallest building. And lo and behold, uh, sent, uh, an article was sent to me the other day saying Oklahoma City is going to build the United States' tallest building. So that's one sign. Number two is stock splits. Uh, we have, have hardly had stock splits for years. We used to have the, oh, if anybody remembers the year 2000 with those stock splits, um, the stock splits were unbelievable. It could be between 9.15 in the morning and 9.30 before the market opened. If a, if a stock was mentioned as a stock split, it could gain 30. I even saw one that was almost a 50% gain just from, and what is a stock split? It means that you've got a pie and you're going to divide it. Wait a minute, you still got the same pie. You haven't increased, in fact, you've taken away a little bit because you had to, you, the, the knife it takes away a fraction when it cuts it. But no, everybody thinks that's the most amazing thing. What it does, of course, is it allows stocks that are up in very big high digits can go down to small numbers so that the layperson can get in and be trapped. So anyway, Amazon we're looking at right now made a high of, it had that two session exact high of 158.51. Then it broke above and then it went on the 28th. Uh, no round numbers. Then yesterday it had an all-time uh, sorry a recovery high all-time high is 188. This was at 161.73, and it closed at 159.00. I mean, this is I can't make these things up. This is for real. This is a, a round number. The, the day made its most recent yearly high, round number. And yet it is under it at 156.31. This is just saying that if um, Amazon after earnings can spike and close above 159, that is positive for a couple of days, just a couple of bars, because that 159 is still going to be very significant. But if it pulls back, the sharper it pulls back from 159, the greater the chances are that you've got a more sustained, at least near-term move to the downside. And it's in a leg D in the weekly chart. So that's Amazon. Uh, wait a minute. Oh, I, I didn't do this. Oh, how dumb is that? TXN. Texas Instrument. I've got to type it on the chart. Otherwise, oh, two days ago, I wrote down in my notes right there at 152. Oh, sorry. What was it? What was it? It was one The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? 
Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So I was also if I would just show my one, five, and ten minute e-mini charts. Um, yeah, so uh, this is Look at that 200 period moving average at a peak D right there uh, in the 49.25 area. <clears throat> but actually, it started off earlier than that. We got that peak G spike, that sudden spike after the economic news at 8.30, went to a G, and that, that was it. That was the high at uh, 49.38.00, round number. And then it starts pulling back. And now look at this. Uh, the 200 period moving average resistance, resistance, repellent line. Now it's pulled back, and you've got the one minute chart still pink, negative. Look at the five minute chart. It made a very nice rogue wave peak F right there at the high, and we pulled back, and it turned pink, and it stayed pink all the way through. Um, and even the 10 minute chart has been negative. So, as I'm looking at this right now, uh, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to do it right now. One of the things I say to subscribers is that we're looking at the chance that we've got a high that's made as January's finishing. And then we've got a couple of days. We've got Thursday and Friday of the new month within the week. It's unusual. Actually, for months and months, we've had both the end of the month uh, going into the Friday and a lot of the time, the end of the month has, go, has gone on into Friday as well. But most importantly, what we're looking at here is um, uh, the chart you're seeing right now is ASA, ASA Gold and Precious Metals. I like to use this as a bit of a bellwether. Uh, it's not doing much. It's stuck at the 200 period moving average at 14.19, up uh, down nine cents. Um, let me go back to what I'm talking about. And I want you to show you this. <clears throat> Within the context of this rotation, you're looking at the SMHs, 195.90 was the high, and that was January the 25th, I think. Yeah, January the 25th, 195.90, and uh, that is the Van Eck Vectors, Van Eck Semiconductor ETF. And we're at 184 right now, a little dreaded H right there, failure pattern. Um, leg D. And this week says there's a real good chance that a little doji candle in the is going to make a peak. This is the semiconductors. So within that context, look, NVIDIA pulling back sharply, as I mentioned, after that run number at the all-time high. Yes, advanced micro devices, AMD. 
pulling back. That's going to be a peak F, the way I'm looking at it right now. Uh, at 164.12, it hit 184. Did I say it was? 184.92. And um, so, so far, in just a couple of days, now, this is a pretty big pullback, but look at that sharp move up it had. Uh, so that uh, it's just a, like a mirror image of what went up is coming down. Now, let's go to, um, I want to go to AMAT, Applied Materials, made a peak D uh, in the 178 level, uh, one, yeah, 178.40. Um, I'm not seeing any round numbers. Anyway, I don't want to go through them. Intel was was really the clue that this was not working out very well. Look at that move. 51.28 back in as we were going to the end of December with a doji candle at a peak D in the Chapman wave. And then it comes plummeting down, uh, gaps down, and now it's at 42. I'd say a 10-point move in a $50 stock. That's 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 pretty quick and pretty serious. Um Question came in here. Could I look at XLU? This is the utility sector. Now, so can I, I don't know if I finished that, Dan, in New York. You asked me about the TNX. That's the 10-year yield, 10-year uh, yield, yeah. Um, so this is a leg A up in the XLU at 62.31, up 73 cents. It made a, an unusual peak G and then kind of gapped down, and that was it. That move in December the 14th to the 60. 6670 level isn't that interesting wow a big spike and then and now it's uh, after just a week and a half ago hitting the uh the 30 what was this is that sorry 59 level is trading at 62. so yes this is a bounce within the utility sector now one of the things about the utilities is that very often they're in a world of their own they are just doing their thing and the general market is doing whatever it is. But I always look at them to say, where is money flowing? And I like to do it in, in terms of the IYR, which is the REITs, the U.S. REITs. Uh, that's the iShares Dow Jones U.S. RE REITs Index Trust, all those words. Um, and look at this. It went to a D, E, the daily chart, E, F. And then a G, and then it's stalled right there. So it's stalling. This is the REITs. Now, one of the reasons why I like to look at REITs is because often on my little screamer list, especially with the low-priced ones, I get a, um, a sense that money is flowing into the real estate area, but it's through a kind of a dividend thing. In other words, it's either through dividends or it's through rentals or you know some income that's being derived. From uh, from those REITs, so you have to do your homework on all the different REITs. But most importantly, I look at the general con the market consensus of this particular in, uh, symbol, and in this particular equity, this uh, this symbol here, IYR, is making lower lows and lower highs. But it's starting to stall in a kind of a rectangle fashion. Stalling is not a bad thing if it's on the way up. Because it says maybe it's just building strength for the next move. It can be a propeller shaft move to the upside. Unfortunately, that's the same thing on the downside. So I'm watching the, the REITs very closely because I have it as a peak B in the weekly chart. There's, a, there's nothing else that I can call it. It is in a buy mode in, in, the, uh, in the weekly. It's kind of stalling. So to put it together, since we're talking dividends, because XLU is dividend, that is, in fact, the utility spider fund. It's not, they're not just similar chart patterns, right? So I'm just going to say that if you are looking at dividends, you want dividend. You remember we spoke about this the other day with Verizon. I said you want capital gain and you want dividends. You don't want uh, capital loss and wonderful dividends. That's going to just wipe you out. So in this particular instance, I would say that XLU, because I see just at the moment, I see some upside. And I see it more short term. I don't really see it as an intermediate term. I would just say I'd put XLU in the position of a trade, which makes you wonder why would you get the XLU if you're not going to be picking up, waiting the three months or so from where it is to get the dividends. That'll probably change for March. It'll probably be, you might, you might have missed the, you might have to wait a while. So in this particular instance, I would, if you are in it, I just hold it if you're in lower down. 
It's not bad. It's a good instrument. But at the same time, it's 63, 73 is a 200 period moving average. That's a dollar. So that's a nice percentage move. One and a, what, almost a 2% move. So, yeah. So if that's that's what you're looking at, I'd say I I would also put a stop in, although in the dividend stock, you really want to, you want to give it room. So all I can say is, if you're looking to buy it, I would buy it here with a, a, a one-point stop. That's a one-point stop. Yeah, that's on a percentage basis. That's the risk that I would take. One, why? Because I can see a potential for one and a half to two points on the upside. It's kind of not the, not the risk that I would take. But I'm just saying, if you are interested, just on your position here at 62. In fact, I'd even tighten the stock. 62.29, I'd have a 61.70 stop. Then it's just ride. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN. 
educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So the IVOCG, which I was asked about, is the uh, Vanguard S&P Midcap. It, it's a fund or ETF. And it's already in a leg D. Underneath the previous all-time high, these are the ones that I'm always a little nervous about because if it fails under that previous high without, and that previous high was, I think, a peak B, almost like the S&P, maybe it's, oh, it's a C. So there's your A, there's your B, there's your C. I'm just, I'll do a little bit of work on this. I'll put it IVOG. I'll do a little work on this. But right now, it's just saying it's holding in this area, 98. It needs to get, it really needs to, to, to very quickly next week, by next week, by a week from Friday, it needs to be trading in the 100s at least two or three times, uh, maybe two times uh, at least, and that'll be very positive. So where am I? Uh, we, as I say, we've started our shorting here because we think that the market is in digestive phase. Uh, most importantly, I am looking at a rotational, how it rotates. I didn't do this in the show. I wanted you to do it and I forgot. XLF is still holding really well as because the uh, yields have come down. So it's a rotational correction.